not a thing to baby. She not. Oh. <laughs> I'm vengeance. Hi. Close your eyes, real quick. Just trust me. Imagine you're in a field and there's nothing but beautiful clouds and grass as far as the eye can see. You see beautiful colors everywhere. And then a man comes from behind and he touches you on the shoulder. You look down and you see a blue, beautiful suit. And as you look up, you see this. Open your eyes. That is Shane from Love is Blind. And after you see him, you'll be like, love has to be blind because, oh my God, what is that face? And today we are doing the Shane Love is Blind reunion. Now, I don't know if you've been keeping up with the series. If not, I advise you to watch my other video on Shane or even the one on Shake because this is from a show called Love is Blind. Essentially, that is what the producers wear off the show, blind. You can see that, right? As usual, I'll explain the premise. It's a group of contestants who don't actually see their partners but have to propose and then see them. So it's already setting you up for failure. And one of the most potent couples was Shane and Natalie, and also Shayna, because there was a little triangle. They were one of the couples I was like, wow, it's a man-child and a lady who is too emotional. When you put them together, what do you get? Big baby explosion. Write that down. And their relationship, for better or for worse, didn't last. And at the altar, Natalie said, hey, f*** you. She didn't say that, but she said, I'm leaving. And she left Shane. The show ended on kind of a sour note, where... The couple didn't get together, and Shane was sad, and so was Natalie. And that was it. That is how it ended. Until the reunion, when we finally get to hear from both couples and their sides. And today, I really wanted to break it down. My name is Dr. Leo. Nice to meet you. I have a PhD, a pretty huge dank memes. And before we start, I'd like you to know that you need to subscribe, because look at this. My dog has no legs, and my plaque is silver. I need that 500k plaque. If you subscribe, I'm going to make a plaque at 500k. I promise you. It'll be a fun video. While you're at it, do follow me at 16leo underscore on Instagram. That way you can give me ideas for the next show. I think I already have the next show, mind you. It's called Too Hot to Handle. And I know some people may have seen it, but the new season, oh, it's gross. It is gross. I couldn't stop watching it. Anyway, let me not keep you any longer. This is the Love is Blind reunion with Shane. And it's a real Shane that we have to watch it. Straight to a, like, a victim mode right away. I'm not a victim, you know, baby. Could, I know, well, you, that's what you sounded like, though. Ah, there's my boy, Shake. I'm not a victim, baby. I'm not a victim. I love him. He is such toxicity. I love it. Keep saying it. I wish he was a Batman villain. So much toxicity in the room, baby. Even more with me, baby! Can you imagine him, like, seeing Catwoman? She looks nice, but she's like my aunt, baby! Uh, Shake's not gonna be in this video much, but he's just there sitting and chilling, and we did do the video on him already. I would love to see more on him, and I wish that Shake and Shane interacted more, but the only time they interact is when Shane is like, get off me, bro. I thought they were best buds. They hate each other. We obviously saw what everybody else saw. There are a couple storylines that the fans really dug into and really want to know more about. And one person who made her feelings known in the competition early was Natalie. So the reunion starts off with the trash talk. Natalie and Shayna have to air their emotions. And of course, the show is hosted by Nick Lachey and Vanessa Lachey. I call them La Cray Cray. Oh, by the way, they also have a new show that's coming out. I'm not going to spoil it. But if you like this video, you're going to love the other show. I guarantee you. I promise. Um, Shayna, what was it like hearing Natalie brag about her connection to Shane right in front of you? Um, it's just awkward. I like wanted to be respectful. It's just very awkward. Well, okay, so was it, was it hard for you? So there is the first look that we get off Shane. He looks like he's coming down from an LSD trip. But also, use crack to prevent the LSD trip from being too low. This man is clearly on something, and I don't know what it is. It was, yeah, it's, it, it's hard to hear, but like at the same time, like I was also like talking to Kyle, and so I was just kind of honestly soaking in the whole entire experiment. Oh, by the way, that's Kyle. That's Shayna's stunt double and second. Once Shane was like, I'm off the market, she went straight to this gnome looking man, and yes, he, he's in between, oh, is that good looking? And man, your face looks like pancake. Kyle seems like, unfortunately, a guy who just got caught up in a situation. They chose each other, and that's how it happened, and it's all it's supposed to be. What's meant to be is meant to be, at the end of the day. 
Hmm. Well, Shane. Hi. I know. Shane looks like he's in $60,000 worth of debt and he needs to pay it off by the end of today or the loan sharks will break his kneecaps. He just looks like he has so much anxiety. Every, when I'm looking at him, I'm like, oh, shit, are you okay? I'm getting secondhand anxiety just by looking at how anxious he's looking. Big moment. Uh, <laughs> Hi. Yeah, how you doing, buddy? He's like, it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> Look at that face. Oh, my God. Look at that face. That is the face of a man who looks like, yeah. Yeah, I just farted. So what? I'll do it again. God damn. A chronic farter. But a, a big moment for the viewers, I think, was when mistakenly thought Natalie was Shayna. But as opposed to apologizing for that mistake, yeah. your response was kind of just <laughs> gaslight her. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Nick Lachey asking all the dumbass questions that a dumbass asks. Hey, if you had a chance, would you, would you take the matches and burn down the studio? Would you commit arson? Of course not. Oh, looking back on the reunion, of course he wouldn't say yes. Come on, buddy. Nick, can you ask some harder hitting questions? Easily the biggest mistake I made on the show. I played victim card right away and I tried to defend myself. Like, we're listening through a tiny little microphone on through a wall, okay? Like, you can hear it differently. By the way, I do want to point out that Shayna's face in this has become a worldwide meme. If you just look up Shayna meme, you will find a picture of this. And if anyone can caption that, I will give you a damn gold medal. What a face. I know this video is about Shane, but Shayna's face, absolutely hilarious. Definitely 100% regret, and I'm honestly ashamed the fact that, like, I... Ashamed or ashamed? I would, I would, if you didn't subscribe for that, I'd be okay. I'd be okay with that. Just went into straight attack mode. I really wish I would have just let her speak. We all it's did just, it. It's just, we all you know. Did it. I've done it. It was, it, just, just, it was just a tough situation. We all did it, guys. I, I mistake my grandma for, 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 for my um, wife. Right, right, Shake? Come on, Shake. <laughs> Kyle, by the way, for anyone who didn't get that joke, actually said, you remind me so much of my mom while proposing to a goal. You remind me so much of my mother. Hey, here's something you don't say every day you remind me of my mom or dad when talking to your partner don't it's not sexy if you call them dad it's sexy if you call them daddy those those dy if you take that out of the equation that becomes the most horrible phrase you ever want to say harder dad Ugh. i'm just curious why you would take the approach of asking natalie to be your girlfriend yeah um, I felt like I needed to assert her, like, you know, this is where I stand and whatnot, and that's the way I did it, and I should not have said that either. Yeah, no, I didn't want to make her my girlfriend. That was a mistake, guys. Uh, Nick, any other questions that you wanted to ask that uh, would make me seem like even more of a douchebag, or are we ever going to get to Natalie, or am I the only one? I feel like they're roasting him so hard. Like, this man obviously had made mistakes, but he's owning up to them like a real Shane. Unlike some Shanes on YouTube, he's owning up to it. And really making the changes. You know what I mean? I'm on Team Shane, not Team Shana. And not on Team Natalie. I don't even like her. And I noticed that whenever you would flirt and talk to Natalie, it definitely seemed to be more on a deeper level. But I also noticed the way that you would flirt with Shayna, it was like, hey girl, what are you wearing? Every time, without fail. That's true, he did say that. Hey girl, what are you wearing? Crop top, crop top. Raindrop, crop top. He was, Shane, Shane was a little bit of a horn dog. But hey, who isn't? I always ask, what are you wearing? And they're like, sir, this is Domino's. Please don't ask what I'm wearing, it's the uniform. And I'll be like, is it sexy? And they're like, hell no, so can I, can I give you cheese with that? I didn't like change my line last minute or anything like that. No, I wanted to explore both situations because they were both completely different. That, that's not what I mean can by I, that. Can that's... I just say something, oh, Shin? God. Sorry to interrupt Jesus. you. I... Yes, Shake. Of course you may interrupt. By the way, again, Shake on this episode, everyone hated at this point. And not many of the cast even follows him. People just don't agree with him. And I am on the fence. Genuinely listening to what he says without bias, it's not always the worst stuff. However, the way that he says it and the way that he acts obviously makes me side with everyone else. So I do get what they're saying, but I want to be objective and be like, oh, okay, I see where he's coming from, even though I don't agree with it. He's out of line, but he's right. But he puts his foot in his mouth very often in this episode. This show is about finding a wife. 
I don't, I don't think that's true. Th this show is about finding love, okay? And the way as I see it- As long as she can get on your shoulders. <laughs> ha! Got him! There it is. Look at that face. That is the face of, oh my God, I left her on red for five weeks. <laughs> Amazing face. And by surprise, you had a different visitor with a shocking revelation. So mm. let's all take a look. Mm. I just wanted you to know. This is something that I was always wondering on the show. Had the contestants seen these portions of the show about each other? Like, especially at the start, who were you talking to? What were you saying to other people? Because that obviously is like air airing dirty laundry. And for some reason, they put Shane in the torture chamber and they now show Natalie his interaction with Shayna. Like, this is the first time Natalie's seen this. And it's pretty, it's pretty wild. Like, you know, he was playing the field, which he was allowed to do, by the way. But <laughs> it's pretty bad to show because Natalie's like, Oh, damn. He was talking like that to her? Do you have deep feelings for you? I wish you would have said that like, like no, I know. days earlier. I felt the same way. I took a back seat. I really regret, I regret it. Sheena, oh! It's like in Dragon Ball Z when Goku gets punched. <laughs> and then he turns Super Saiyan. I was waiting for Shane to turn Shayna Saiyan. But look at him. I've never seen someone take pressure so badly before in my life. It's so wild to watch someone literally like cringe to death with his own like actions. How did it feel watching that on TV for the first time? The fact Shane said if you know, you told me two days earlier it could have been, you know, potentially different. It's not something he was telling me. I felt like... I don't know. Do you tell someone that information? It seems like it was just between those two anyway. At the same time, I do think he should have told her before he married her. That's something you'd probably want to tell your wife. Hey, you know, this girl's trying to get in my pants. I just wanted you to know that in case some weird stuff comes up. I'm just, I'm just saying. Heard me. It was just going to be me. It was only me. So seeing that... Bitch. This is a show called Love is Blind, and there was like 20 contestants. And you knew all the contestants was talking to other contestants. Like, what are you talking about? It was only you. I don't get it. Do you not know how the show works? Do you go on Survivor and you're like, these other bitches are surviving. What? I thought it was just me. Really? Really, Natalie? You walked in saying you were supportive of our relationship and you used to like him and that was it. Mm -hmm. So I just think seeing that and feeling like you were dishonest was, you know, really tough. I'm sorry for that. No, I am. <laughs> so then Natalie tells Shayna, and, and honestly, in a really professional way, Natalie comes off really well here. She's like, Shayna, I really feel like that was bad. And all Shayna could say is, ah, oh, man, I am sorry for that. You're right. You're right, I shouldn't have tried to go behind your back and cheat on your man. <laughs> we good? No? Alright. <laughs> okay. This was one of the biggest days of my life going into it. And I literally thought I was going to come into a, a room proposing to my girl. And someone else came into that room. And you're, you, get, like, you literally get punched right in the face. Not literally. If you literally got punched in the face, you would have literally got punched in the face. Like literally, like I blacked out when it happened and everything that went down, okay? Whole mindset was focusing on proposing to Natalie the whole time and then I hear Shayna's voice. It just fucked with my mind a little bit and that's what it was about and I obviously was very dramatic, that's just who I am. I just don't get it. Like, if you have that big a goal on your mind and you're gonna propose to someone, you don't let that, like, I don't know. I wouldn't let someone else deter me. I would be like, this is what I'm doing today, whether people like it or not, I'm gonna propose to her. Because I love her. But maybe Shane didn't actually love her. I don't know. It's sort of like when you announce that you're engaged. And maybe, I don't know if this is a thing for everyone, your ex comes into the picture and then starts saying all these things. I, I don't care what my ex will say because you had your chance. And, and you let it slip away. Sorry, but you did. And if I like someone, then I like someone. I'm not going to commit to anyone else. Why was that meeting even a thing? And why did that even happen? I wish I knew I would be able <laughs> yeah, to. Yeah, idea? Was that? Where, where, you're holding my mother's engagement ring. You remind me so much of my mother. Oh God, whenever you compare your mom to your girlfriend, you might as well just close up the pants, zip it up and ship it away. 
She makes me the happiest. I want someone who resembles her. Oh, that's even worse, Kyle. If you want someone who resembles your mother, why don't you just go straight to hell where you belong? Ah, God, and fucking Jesus Christ, man. When I call her mommy... I want her to be my mommy. Blow up fight the night before your wedding that ultimately ended your engagement. Um, it was after a lot of drinking at the bachelorette and the bachelor party. What happened? So, as I said in the video of Shane and Natalie, um, they actually ended their whole relationship based on a fight that wasn't caught on camera, which is the whole job of the reality television. But anyway, they had a fight that was apparently relationship ending. Uh, now we finally get to hear about it, or at least try and talk about it. So I'd really like to know what that was about fully. Everyone kind of has like a breaking point during this whole experiment and like the pressure, all of this is on you. And, you know, obviously the drinking and like, you know, you're getting married and like that night, it's like, I, we, I'm. Just, just focus on the word, Shane. Just take your time next time. Cause he's just talking and his head is going way too slow for his mouth. I kind of just like had a moment where like, oh shit, like. I don't know. Uh... Oh my God, he's not thinking, come on. Forrest Gump over here is taking too long. I just had a moment where I, uh, I'm a goofy goober. <laughs> just come on. Trust me, my dad don't think about that fucking night and go over to my head differently. 100%, yeah. yeah. Did you say things you didn't want to say? Yeah, of course. I called her a boat. I said I wouldn't ride it. Yeah, I may have called her King Kong once or twice and I definitely called her Godzilla. I don't know, I was drinking a lot that night. No, not really, I guess. It was, an, it was an emotional reaction, you know? And I have to get better at, you know, not being so reactive to certain situations. How was that night for you, Natalie? Uh... Oh, <laughs> damn, I was almost getting emotional till I saw Shayna's face creeping up there like. I mean, it sucks, because I feel like that night changed everything. I like, I truly believe that he is like remorseful of it. Like he has apologized a million times. Unlike Shake, I feel like Shane is truly a person who thinks about how his actions affect other people. And that's the problem with Shake. Shake is so honest and so dire that he doesn't really consider how other people react to what he says. And while I think that's okay, I don't think you necessarily need to be empathetic towards other people, I think it does help. And Shane does seem like an empathetic person. But at the same time, this man has to put his foot down. Natalie is not 100% perfect either. She does things that he doesn't like, and they're both not really well suited for each other. And I think that shows, and it showed throughout the whole episode. Shane is someone who needs that affirmation, and Natalie's love language is to tease someone. They're completely different, and sometimes it works for people, but not if you need the positive affirmation 100% of the time. Two people can't change that much for each other. Compromise isn't 100, it's 50-50. Because really that night changed everything for us. I know, like, it sounds stupid to say a fight changed everything, but I think it just... Well, that's actually how most relationships end. <laughs> a, f a fight changed... I know it's stupid to say, but like... I watched Fight Club and I didn't think Shane was gonna be one of them. Ugh. We have like big issues to work through and I think it's just hard knowing that night happened, but I, I, I'm not saying that you have to work through every problem for marriage. But I mean, there was a reason also why I got to that point too. I just, I can't take her seriously. I can't take her seriously every time they zoom in and she's like. Okay, like you, you're still not, you haven't apologized like kind of like your side of the story. I take most of the blame, yes, but like you're sitting there like saying, I don't, I just this and that. It's like, dude. I'm not putting the blame on you by any means. So then Shane actually takes a stand, which I think is really important. And he says, you know, I can't take 100% of the blame because when two people are in a relationship, I do think you have to communicate and be like, why did this break down? I'll tell you something in my life. I messaged all my exes uh, and I asked them, what did I do wrong? so I could be better to the next person. I really did that. And it was a hard conversation because it's not easy to hear. Oh, you know, you suck. Oh, you are a bitch. Oh, you are this and that. A hundred things and it's not easy to hear. It's even less easy to accept it and be like, I am so sorry that I was not mature enough at the time to deal with that. But it's great because it gives you the opportunity to be like the next person in my life will get all of these good things because I'm working on myself. 
So I did that. I don't think everybody's capable of doing that genuinely. It's not easy. But I feel like Shane is trying to communicate, and that's a great thing. And Natalie is reciprocating as well. So say what you want about them. Unlike Shake and Deep Tea, they're really having that dialogue that they both need to have where they're both on a page where it's like, tell me what you think you did. Tell me what well, I'll tell you what I think I did, and we'll try and go from there. And even if we're moving apart, we can learn from that lesson. I feel like we've talked about this because we have. Like, I obviously apologize for making you feel like you weren't good enough. Because I don't, like, I feel like you were more than enough. <laughs> okay, that was a very tender moment until he started making the, the noises off a caveman from the prehistoric era. Shane, what are you thinking right now? <laughs> just fucking sad. He says, smiling. <laughs> I'm just fucking sad. <laughs> I'm just fucking sad. I don't think in our situation there's a good guy or a bad guy. Yes, but like you didn't say like, I was a good guy there. Like I just want you to say those kind of things. I'm gonna ask a really difficult question and one you may not be able to answer. What's two plus eight? I'm Nick Lachey. I really don't know. What's two plus eight? I said to my wife, it's seven. And she's been arguing with me every time. I said, Terrence Howard said, it's not one. But do you, the two of you, in talking about that night and reliving the experience together, do you feel like you may have missed a chance at being really happy? Did that night, was that night? Ask one question, Nick, please. I'm going to ask you a really hard question. And he proceeds to ask the most long-winded question that is super hard to answer. Can you just ask, was the night the deal breaker? And do you think that there is anything left in this relationship? You didn't have to do this weird like thing that you did. It's like within our grasp, you know, did that night completely derail it? I just don't like thinking that way. Yeah. Oh. Uh -uh. Yeah, that's... Yeah. <laughs> He asked like a 10 minute question. She's like, I don't like thinking that way. Yeah. Nick came up with like a Yu-Gi-Oh question. He's like, now I pull out my trap card. Hard question. Put it down. And they just were like, yeah. Yeah. It was just such a lame answer to such a lame question. Uh, we gave it another shot after our wedding day. It was just too fresh. I will say for me, I like held on to that fight for so long and I kind of held it against you and... See, now this is the stuff that we should really be talking about. If you're gonna talk about this real reunion and stuff, this is important stuff to note. They tried dating beyond the show, which means they really wanted to give it a chance. It's not just for cameras. And unfortunately, the wound was too fresh and Natalie even admitted that she held some things against Shane. And when you hold something against your partner, especially if they're your ex, you're never going to be able to move forward healthily. It's sad. Really sad. Because, you know, I wanted them to walk out. And I think they're both really cool people. Genuinely. It's just, it's hard to see this. That you and Shayna... Uh, here's the deal. I'm not going to get into that, that conversation. That's, I don't, I'm sorry. Oh, like, no, I'm just asking if you guys oh. have seen each other before today. Yes. <gasps> Say what? I love how uh, Vanessa is such a shit star. Oh, hey. We had that whole sequence of everyone saying, like, you know, it's great to see these two together. And she's like, ah, you know, another thing people have been dying to know is that you and Shayna have seen each other outside of cameras. Tell us about that. She just wanted to ruin his day. I, this is why Shane has so much anxiety. He knew they were just out to get him. Sorry, Shayna, what's... No, I'm just, I'm like, I don't know why he's reacting that way. People just want to know because they're invested in, in your growth. Are you uncomfortable talking about that? Are you uncomfortable talking about how, you know, I just brought up how you've been, like, going out with someone else? Is that uncomfortable to you? Jesus Christ. Vanessa is just too much sometimes. It's literally the last thing I was going to say before I moved on to Ayana, so we don't have to talk about <laughs> it. I just, I'll ask Shana. Hey, girl. Yeah, there's nothing, that, we were always just friends. There was nothing ever romantic afterwards. Or I actually like didn't even, wasn't oh, even, I, know, I just, just wanted I don't to know, know if y'all saw each other. Vanessa is just so much of a mess sometimes, man. As a host on the show, she is just so... I mean, it's toxically bad. It's funny, but it's hilariously bad how incompetent at their job they are. Away from your and Shane's story, there was nothing like that. I think that's probably what it is. Yeah, there was nothing. It's just emotional. Yeah. I totally get that. Yeah. So then the episode ends with Shane doing this.
because he has nothing left to say. He, I think, I'm not sure if he feels embarrassed. I'm not sure why he didn't want to talk about it. I feel like a guilty man has nothing to hide. So I'm not sure if there was something there. But that is to his own private life. Nobody's really wanting to bring that up, and I respect that. So that is how the reunion ends with Shake and Natalie. Uh-huh. <laughs> I said Shake and Natalie. Wouldn't that be something? You know, she reminds me of my Asian cousin. With Shane and Natalie, I mean. Um, Ultimately, it's a relationship that is pretty humane. I think the relationship actually represents a lot of people's struggles to find the perfect person. And sometimes you find someone and you're in a position where you just throw everything at them because you want it to work so badly. Because when you're in a relationship or when you like someone, of course, you want it to work really badly. And unfortunately... When you're moving so fast, you tend to overlook things that might be deal breakers. And I think it's very important, no matter what age you are, not to settle. Because it makes you unhappy in the long run. And it makes the other person unhappy. And you don't want two people unhappy because you only get this amount of time. You're never getting this time back, whether you like it or not. So I think it's important to look at this relationship and see that sometimes people overlook really big things. Other times people move too fast. And it's important not to not make these mistakes, but to learn from them when you do make them. Because you're going to find that right person. And if you've already found that right person, did they subscribe? Because if they didn't, I'll tell you right now, they suck ass. Unless that's what you want them to do. But um, that is my crappy advice for the day. Thank you so much. I hope everyone's taking care of themselves. This has been a great series, and I hope that you'll enjoy the next one. Until then, this has been Leo saying... (laughs) <laughs> Take care of yourselves, please. Thank you. Love you. Bye. Hey, I'm just, I'm-